Today we are going to discuss volume loading hypertension caused by primary aldosteronism. So how the volume loading hypertension is basically caused by increased or excess level of aldosterone. So first of all we will discuss what basically is aldosterone and then we will discuss how it leads to uh, volume loading hypertension and uh, what are the steps or the sequence of volume load loading hypertension in aldosteronism so basically the aldosterone the num uh, the the level of aldosterone in the body in the human body can increase uh, through different mechanisms but if the there is a tumor in the adrenal gland and it secretes a lot of aldosterone then it is known as primary aldosteronism so aldosterone basically it is a hormone it is a hormone which is basically secreted from the adrenal gland it is basically secreted from the adrenal gland on top of the kidney and the, the purpose of aldosterone the purpose of aldosterone is to reabsorb salt and water it is the purpose of aldosterone is to reabsorb salt and water from the blood or the uh, filtrate so basically what happens is that blood comes to the glomeruli blood comes to the glomeruli and it gets filtered over here it gets filtered over here the useful the useful nutrients the useful nutrients they get reabsorbed useful nutrients they get reabsorbed from the filtrate in the uh, in the tubules in the renal tubules which are basically present in the kidney and the waste material the waste material it goes down the waste material it goes down in the form of urine now a lot of mechanisms are involved in the reabsorption process in this reabsorption process aldosterone basically it helps in the reabsorption of salt and water from the filtrate when the blood is filtered in the glomerulus when the blood is filtered in the glomerulus after that it uh, goes through the different renal tubules it goes through different renal tubules and from the renal tubules the aldosterone helps in the reabsorption of salt and water now depending upon the level of aldosterone the amount of salt and water reabsorption is dependent if the level of aldosterone is high high amount of or large amount of salt and water will be reabsorbed here and it will go back into the blood it will go back into the blood if the aldosterone level is normal then excess salt and water will not be reabsorbed and salt and water the, the, the will go in the urine now what happens when there is a tumor in this area the place from which the aldosterone is secreted in the adrenal gland if there is a tumor and it secretes a lot of aldosterone it is known as the primary aldosteronism and in this uh, in this condition a lot of aldosterone is secreted and this aldosterone basically helps in the reabsorption of salt and water it helps in the reabsorption of salt and water and this reabsorption of salt and water leads to increase in the blood volume and extracellular fluid volume now we discussed initially that the two important determinant the two important determinant of the arterial pressure are the intake of salt and water and the renal function curve if we interfere with any one of these two determinants the renal function or the intake of salt and water the the arterial or the equal the arterial pressure or the equilibrium point will shift either to the right or the left so in this condition when the aldosterone level increases the renal functions changes and it shifts toward the right side the equilibrium point point changes it shifts toward the right side and so the arterial pressure increase this is basically the arterial pressure now this graph has been discussed in detail 
we have discussed this graph again and again in the previous few lectures now on this side we are showing the intake versus output intake of salt and water or water versus excretion or the output of fluid and this is showing the arterial pressure so if whether we increase the intake of salt and water or if we move the renal function toward this side the arterial pressure the arterial pressure on this x axis is going to increase anyway now when the aldosterone increases it leads to increased reabsorption of salt and water so the renal function changes and it leads to it's lead it leads to a lot of accumulation of salt and water which is basically equivalent to increase intake of salt and water so this thing also increase the in the amount of the blood volume and the fluid volume both increase and this thing leads to hypertension or increase in the arterial pressure and the arterial pressure that is or the hypertension the high arterial pressure that is due to the increased fluid volume that is due to increased blood or the extracellular fluid volume is known as the volume loading hypertension and that's why volume loading hypertension occurs in the primary aldosteronism it can occur in primary aldosteronism which is due to tumor in the adrenal gland but this volume loading hypertension can occur in any condition which leads to increase in the aldosterone level in the human body and it can also occur when there are some similar steroids steroids which have similar functions like aldosterone now once hypertension occurs in the uh, primary aldosteronism it in the long run it leads to pathological changes in the kidney pathological changes occur in the kidney and the kidney starts increased retention of salt and water now apart from the function of aldosterone the kidney in itself starts increased absorption of salt and water more salt and water is reabsorbed from the filtrate here in the renal tubules and instead of going in the urine instead of going in the urine the salt and water get reabsorbed in the blood the salt and water get reabsorbed in the blood and the amount of salt and water increase in the body which again leads to increased more increase in the blood volume and extracellular fluid volume and it, then it leads to severe or lethal hypertension so that's how volume loading hypertension occurs in aldosteronism it may be primary aldosteronism or it may be secondary aldosteronism or it may be uh, due to some other steroids which have similar functions like aldosterone which basically helps in the reabsorption of salt and water and it leads to basically accumulation of uh, salt and water in the body which basically increases the blood volume and increase in blood volume basically causes the volume loading hypertension because for increasing the arterial pressure we need either to increase the amount of salt and water or we need to interfere with the the, uh, the renal functions now the sequence of volume loading hypertension is the same as the uh, primary volume loading hypertension sequence of volume loading hypertension in primary aldosteronism is same as in the uh, volume loading hyper uh, primary volume loading hypertension and the sequence is that initially when salt and water are absorbed excess salt and water are reabsorbed it leads to increase in the extracellular fluid volume suppose for example at this point the the in the in excess salt and water was started uh, a reabsorption was started so initially the extracellular fluid volume started increasing the then the blood volume started increasing and it led to the increase in cardiac output the cardiac output also started increasing but eventually eventually the total peripheral resistance the total peripheral resistance it started increasing and the arterial pressure the arterial pressure also started increasing but we have to differentiate that arterial pressure started increasing when there was an increase in the extracellular fluid volume blood volume and cardiac output but initially there was a dip or decrease in the total peripheral resistance 
initially there was no increase in the total peripheral resistance arterial pressure was basically increasing due to the increase in extracellular fluid volume blood volume and cardiac output but the these subs, these uh, parameters the extracellular fluid volume the blood volume the cardiac output they return to normal they return to normal and they they all return to normal but the total peripheral resistance it did not return to normal and instead it remain elevated it remain elevated and then the arterial pressure in this condition is again caused initially by initially by increased cardiac output and increased extracellular fluid volume but after that it is again caused by increased total peripheral resistance so the sequence of volume loading hypertension in high primary aldosteronism is the same as sequence of primary volume loading hypertension and the sequence is initially the increase in the arterial pressure occurs due to accumulation of extracellular fluid volume increase in blood volume increase in cardiac output but finally these parameters will come to normal and the increase in the arterial pressure the increase in the arterial pressure will be due to increase in the total peripheral resistance because all these parameters decrease or they come to almost an almost normal level but the total peripheral resistance remain elevated and is the arterial pressure is the arterial pressure is the product of cardiac output into total peripheral resistance that's why due to initially initially the high arterial pressure was due to increase in cardiac output when the cardiac output has returned to normal then finally the increase in arterial pressure is due to increase in total peripheral resistance increase in total peripheral resistance so that's all about the sequence of volume loading hypertension in primary aldosteronism thanks a lot for watching the video